Hello and welcome back. We are on to comparison operators for this one. So each one of these videos in a series, uh, 3.1, 3.2, and 3.3, these are all kind of building on each other. So we started off with a Boolean variable like this, where we can either set something to true or false. Then we learned about and, or, and not operators where we can set something um, as either reverse, so if it's true, we can have it read as false. And then we have things being compared in groups, so it's either this and this, or this or this. Now let's talk about comparison operators. So comparison operators, there are six, and you saw this in the other video. Now the main one that I want to talk about is the equal to. So this is not the sign for equal to. The single equal sign is actually an assignment operator. We've seen this when we created variables x equals 7. When it stands all by itself, this means 7 is being stored inside of x. Okay. In order for you to compare something as equal to, you actually use two equal signs. Okay. So please, please make sure that as you're doing your equals, you recognize that you need two equal signs because this means assigned. And you'll notice when I talk about it, I don't say x equals 7. I say x is assigned 7 because this is an assignment operator. Now, the not equal to also has two pieces to it. It has the not sign and an equal. So you literally read it across as not equal. The less than, this should not come as any surprise. It's just the less than operator sign that you've seen in math. Greater than is the greater than. Now, greater than or equal to, just be aware, you always put your um, caret or your open mouth or whatever you want to call it before your equal sign. And the same for your less than. You always want those before you use those. If you put them after, it's not going to read it correctly. All right. So let's go ahead and compare a couple of values. So I'm going to declare a couple of variables. I'm going to assign 7 to x. I'm going to assign y to 4. Now I'm going to declare a variable that I'm just going to call bool. And I'm going to check each one of these. So let's start off with x is equal to y. Now we know this is going to read as false. So let's print our Boolean variable. And it's going to read as false because x is not equal to y. 7 is not equal to 4. All right, so let's go ahead and flip that with a not operator. Um, the bool variable is x is not equal to y. This is going to read as true because x is not equal to y. All right, so let's go ahead and read less than. x is less than y. Well, that's false because 7 is not less than 4. <coughs> so that's going to read as false. Let's say greater than or equal to y. This one will read as true. Okay, because 7 is greater than 4. Uh, greater than or equal to. Gives us a little extra in there. That one's going to be set to true. And then I'll put less than or equal to. And then that will, re will read as false. So each one of these operators helps us create a Boolean variable set to either true or false. All right, so let's back up just a little bit to my earlier program that I did in the last video on the adoption. So I'm going to change it up just a little bit, and I'm going to get numbers from my person or from my user. So I'm going to get age over 18, and I'm going to read an int for this one. And instead of saying, are you over the age of 18, I'm going to say, how old are you? Okay, and then we're going to do a variable for enough money, and we're going to another, read another int, how much money do you have right now? <clears throat> And then we're going to say can adopt, but this time it's going to be a little bit more complicated because I need to compare a couple of things. So first off, 
h over 18 has to be greater than or equal to the number 18. So if they put in the number 17 answering how old are you, it needs to be greater than 18 for it to be true. And enough money needs to be greater than or equal to the number 40 because we need to make sure that they have enough money to adopt the pet. So now let's go ahead and print. Can you adopt a pet today? And we're going to add can adopt. All right. So here's what our program should do. It's going to ask our user a question saying, how old are you? Then it will ask them, how much money do you have right now? It's then going to compare their answers to a couple of numbers. It's going to check their age against our limit, which is 18, and it's going to check how much money they have against our money limit. And then it's going to check, are they good for both of those? So let's go ahead and check this out. How old are you? I'm going to start off where I know the answers will both be true. So I'm going to say 34. How much money do you have right now? I'm going to say $100. Can you adopt a pet today? It is set to true. Now let's run it where one of the answers is false. So I'm going to keep the first answer is true. How old are you? 34 is greater than 18. But then I'm going to say I have $35. Can I adopt a pet today? False. I do not have enough money. All right, let's say I am 16. How old are you? 16. How much money do you have right now? I have $55. Since one of those is false, it's going to read as false. And then let's go ahead and do one last one where they're both false. I am 14 with $1 in my pocket. I cannot adopt a pet today. All right, so that is how you use those operators. Now you can put as many things in here as you want. Okay, so let's say I had one other thing that we're checking where they have to be over 18, enough money, and has own place. Okay, so has own place. We're going to read a line for this one. Do you have your own place? Okay. And if age over 18 and enough money and has own place equals yes, then we can adopt. So how old are you? 34, $100. Do you have your own place? Yes. Can you adopt a pet? So notice here I used the equals because I wanted has own place to equal this exact string. Now be aware, if it doesn't equal this exact string, if I had used a capital Y-E-S, it will have kicked it back as false, just so you guys are aware of that. Because it doesn't recognize lowercase Y-E-S as the same thing as uppercase Y-E-S, so just be aware of that. All right, so for your different assignments today, you have a rolling dice activity where you need to collect two numbers. Just remember dice have the numbers between one and six. Don't go over six. And then um, it's going to check those against each other. And then the other one is a Girl Scout one. Now, with the Girl Scouts, you have multiple things to check. Gold status is if they reach 100 box of cookies or, notice it gives you that keyword, 50 boxes, 10 badges, and 25 hours. So you'll have a lot of different um, operators in there. Make sure you use parentheses around your different pieces. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and let you guys get to work on that. I hope you have fun.